Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1 and today we're going to talk about the female Bjorn Krieger, but I'm going to take this opportunity to also talk about positioning a little bit and I hope that that'll help you. But first, I know you're all here for traits, so that's what we're going to get into because I don't like to waste your time. I believe that there are three viable builds on this character, of course there's way more than that, but these are my three favorite. And the way that we're going to decide what we're going to use is we're going to look at the enemies that we are generally facing. If you are very often facing enemies that are using the Bulko Sprite, you're not going to use this first build. If you don't have the traits available to you, you're not going to use this first build. But I think that this character is absolutely best used when she's using the Speedy Boy build. If you remember from my old videos, that was brutal, energetic or honorable, agile, and of course focus. If you're fighting a lot of Bulko Sprites, the Speedy Boy build is not worth it. It's just not, and you're better off just doing a lot more damage. However, the benefits of this character, even though she can do a lot of damage, I don't think she's best used by maximizing that damage. She's actually best used by maximizing the stuns and interrupts from her ultimate ability as well as the anti-heal that comes with her ultimate ability and that's why we want to use it as much as possible and why we don't really care if she's getting as much damage as she should. Now, she does have some abilities that are going to make you do more damage to the enemy team, but also reduce the damage that the enemy team is doing to you. That's why I didn't mind having only one defensive trait here. If you're using the Speedy Boy build and you feel like she's dying too much, you may switch in whatever energetic or honorable you didn't put on instead of brutal. That could work just fine too. If you are fighting a bunch of Bulko Sprites, then I suggest using the Bruiser build on her, just like on the male. And that of course is gonna be brutal, aggressive, steadfast and a defensive trait. You'll be getting less of her utility off with this build, but you're going to be doing a lot more damage, especially if you're using her on teams where you don't have any pushbacks. I know I suggest putting her with the male, and I still think that that's really good if you're good at the positioning, but she's absolutely best used with other characters that are pulling the enemies in towards you instead of pushing them away. If you're on a new account like I am, then of course the basic build is what I'm going to recommend here because you just can't lose with it, and it's extra good on warriors. Now when we're talking about positioning here. I normally, if I have two melee characters, will put them on the same side, maybe in slots one and five or even one and two, and that will drag the enemy team so they all clump up next to me. In this particular situation, since I'm using both the male and female, and he will knock people back and she doesn't love that so much, I'm actually going to split them apart so I can get the most out of both of these characters, and it's very disruptive for the enemy team. When I'm doing that, I prefer to have the female in the one slot, and the reason is because she will usually draw three people to her, making the most of her passive in this situation, and it often sets up the male for doing his line attack and getting extra freezes on two of the characters. On my particular team, I have the male Akuna, who I'm trying to make heal the female Akuna, and so I want him to be behind her, but I also want him to be behind the female Bjorn Krieger. And the reason that I want to do that, number one, she's pulling in more people so that he can hit more people with his line attack, which is very strong. And then it also leads to more CC on this team specifically, because I end up freezing everybody on the map. The team does still work fine if you're using some other format, but I think that this is probably the best format that this particular team would be in, and if you know the teams I've been suggesting, in this case, I would not have a male ASN, I would have a male water and sun, if all things were sunshine and rainbows. So here we'll see she's gonna pull somebody in, now she's got three of them by her, we're still getting freezes on everybody on the team, and doing a whole bunch of damage while both lanes are covered in ice, and that's why I run it in this formation. And since we've already talked about this team comp in a couple of other videos, I'm not going to cover it too deep, but I am going to talk about team building and what you're looking for, because we all have different goals and different champions available to us. The main thing for maximizing her ultimate, which again is her best ability, is just having people pulling things in on your team. That's all you care about. Having heals, also a very good thing to do, and I really like that too. But since we're going for speedy alts here in my ideal situation, it's not bad to have some sort of stone thrower trait or anything else on the team that's going to boost your attack speed. Those things can be really helpful just to help you get more of those alts out, but you don't want to sacrifice too much to have it on the team. In this case, a male Almot comes to mind as somebody who might go well with her. Another warrior that's doing a lot of damage boosts her attack speed so she gets back to ultimates faster. It all seems like it could work together. Now while she does have a lot of crowd control and utility on her ultimate, other than that, she's not bringing all that much to the table, so having a lot of group stuns on the team would be a really good idea as well. In the early game, her single best friend, I would say, is going to be the male Tidestorm. 
I don't think you're going to get a better synergy out of a character that you can be guaranteed that you have access to, and that's very easy to get the companion. So if you're planning for the future and you don't know what you're going to be able to summon and you're on a newer account, this is the first character I would look at to pair her with. And just to prove to you guys that I don't hate the female Lionstone and I think she can be good, I'm going to let you use her on this team. I'm going to let you. And the reason is because uh, we got really big damage in the ultimate. It does help to boost it up. But you better watch my other video and pay attention to the mistakes that you need to avoid. Because if you're not, then don't put her on your team because she's so easy to be useless. And I will say it until I'm blue in the face. But if you want to in the early game you could put her on, I wouldn't invest in her. And I would probably use the male in this situation. I'm just saying it because I'm tired of hearing your crap. And the thing is, any of the early game champions that you're going to use as a frontliner are not going to be long-term successful. Everybody will tell you female Lionstone will be. I disagree with that. So anybody that you invest in to carry this slot for now is probably a little weaker than you wish it was. But female Ugrel would be a really good choice. She's got her own sustain and we're drawing in the enemy team anyway. So we're going to maximize her ultimate as well. Plus you got a couple of people spinning together and I think that could be really fun and cool. Female Fulgur is also extraordinarily good in this composition because we're bringing people together and she's got a huge line attack that's going to do a ton of damage. So she's really going to help you with that but she's also bringing hulking to the team. And if you're going with the female Ugrel as well as the female Bjorn Krieger, you're going to have everybody on your team doing a little bit of damage and having hulking boosting that up is of course going to be very strong. Which brings me to my next point. The one true best and fantastic original person who came out with the game. It is the male and of course. And the reason that we're going to put this guy on is he's bringing us sustain. He's bringing us a big damage alt. And he's bringing us, that's right, a huge bonus to our strength percentage. Now, we had a fun discussion in our stream and a little discussion in my Discord after the stream about whether or not this guy is still viable. I think that he's still viable until the end of the game. You're going to be really struggling to prove me wrong. Everybody who tries to is just showing me a low-level male ASN with no vigor that they put against the best teams in the game and they're like, see, he died! It's like, well, yeah, of course he died. You are not capable of making him the best he can be, so you're not using him in a real test here. You're just throwing him into I'm Right Simulator and saying, oh man, he died, what's what's the deal? So yeah, I, I don't know. I know people are trying to think it through and make good points, I just disagree with it. So that's my early game team for this champion. Female Bjorn Krieger, female Ugrel, male Tidestorm, male Aeson, and female Fulger. I think it's a pretty solid team. I think you're gonna replace a lot of those champions, so I wouldn't maybe take them past 10 stars. It gets a little expensive after 10 stars. Before that, it's not so bad. You're really not investing all that much to get to that point. It may seem daunting right now, but as time goes by, you'll see what I mean. A lot of people are probably gonna tell you that this character is good, but not great, and I would say that they're saying that because they're undervaluing a couple of things on the character sheet. Number one, the amount of anti-heal she brings is fantastic. She gets it from her clan trade and her ultimate and being able to reduce the strength of enemies around you is always a good thing and doing that by 25% from your active skill which is an AOE very strong. I understand why people might not appreciate this fortitude passive. I think that it's probably better than people think but I also think that it's not the best thing in the world. And I hope now you understand the parts of this character that are exceptional and you'll try to maximize them in your team builds. And if I helped you to do that in any way, then please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. For now, I want to thank you for watching. I have been Rage Panda one and I'll see you in the next one.